Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in my series on using TinyGo on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of this, TinyGo is a Go compiler and a Go runtime environment for microcontrollers. And they have a port of Go uh, or TinyGo for the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, which as you know is, um, is based on the RP2040 chip that uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation released um, nearly a year, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, and it is a very popular chip. It's extremely capable. I actually have some details about the chip and the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico board on my website. Uh, the link is in the description below. So feel free to visit my website, uh, go take a look at uh, the articles there, and uh, please feel free to uh, participate there uh, with uh, discussions and comments as well as feedback. Um, obviously, I'd love to get feedback on uh, this video itself. And I'm hoping to release more videos on uh, TinyGo on the Raspberry Pi Pico, as well as MicroPython at a later date. All right, so um, let's get started now. I've uh, basically created a blank uh, folder inside of uh, my computer, and I've actually installed the, uh, I've installed obviously VS Code, as well as, um, Go and the tiny Go environment inside of Visual Studio Code. Um, I have instructions to all of these on my website. I'll put a link, direct link to the setup instructions inside uh, in the description below. So feel free to pursue, uh, peruse that. Um, go set up your computer using the same thing. I actually have a couple of uh, extras in there on uh, how to use serial terminals to debug uh, with TinyGo because with TinyGo you don't have access to the USB port uh, to be used as a serial monitor for debugging. So you're going to have to use the UART on the chip or on the board uh, in order to do debugging. So I've got all of those instructions there. I've also got instructions on how you can set up a very simple reset button uh, so that you don't have to keep doing this, uh, this nonsense of plugging and unplugging, uh, unplugging and plugging uh, the USB cable uh, to put the Raspberry Pi Pico into boot mode. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked about a bunch of setup things, let's uh, sort of dive into actually coding this very simple sort of program. Um, the first step that I want to do is uh, because we are in um, we are in a Go environment, I'm actually going to create a new folder here uh, where I want to put my application. I'm going to call it Blink. Uh, and within the Blink folder, um, I'm going to go in and uh, initialize uh, a Go module. So we'll do a Go module in it. Uh, pragmatic.tech, which is my website, slash Blink. So we initialize that, and you'll notice that um, we've now written a go.mod file um, in there. The next thing that we will do is set up TinyGo to actually work, or the TinyGo extension to actually work inside of Visual Studio Code so that you get type hints and prompts and things like that, and you can actually use TinyGo just like it, you would use Go or any other language inside of Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and do that. So for that, I'm going to basically go to the command prompt, uh, in, um, and to the command window inside of Visual Studio Code, which is Command Shift P on the Mac or Control Shift P if you are on Windows. And we're going to search for the tiny Go um, extension and you'll see there are two commands there so we will basically click on the target command and pick Pico as the target board. The moment we do this uh, TinyGo essentially runs a bunch of little commands and you'll notice that it's actually written a .vs code um, directory there along with a settings.json that basically point it to some of the tools that it will be using and specific directories that it will be using for TinyGo itself. All right, so now that we've initialized everything, we actually now have TinyGo set up. There's not a whole lot else to do. You'll find as soon as you uh, initialize TinyGo, you'll find in the lower status bar that you can see TinyGo colon Pico. Uh, so that was the target that we selected, as well as uh, a link to Go 1.18.3, which is the version of Go that I'm using. Okay, so now inside of our Blink folder, uh, let's go create a new file and we'll call this blink.go uh, quite unsurprisingly because that's what we want our program to do. 
So here we go. We've got a blink.go application. Uh, I'm going to just put in a simple comment so that it makes it easy for me to copy paste this later. Um, and then let's start our actual program. So we'll create a new package. We'll call that package blink. Um, and what we will do is for the moment, we will import just the machine library or the machine, uh, yeah, the machine library. Uh, the machine library is basically a library that's provided by TinyGo and, uh, or a module that's provided by TinyGo that provides a lot, uh, that's basically how they port TinyGo to different boards. And so there's actually a machine implementation for the Pico, there's a machine implementation for the Arduino, and one for pretty much every device that TinyGo supports. All right, so we've imported machine, and then as with all wonderful Go programs, let's start with our typical function main. And inside of main, the first thing I'm gonna do is, all because all I want this program to do is flash the onboard LED um, uh, maybe twice a second, uh, we'll just start with declaring a simple variable uh, we, we'll just call it LED and we will set that variable to machine.led. Now machine.led is a constant that is set to the onboard LED of the machine. So on the Arduino, if it has an, if it has an Ar uh, onboard LED, it would be set to the appropriate GPIO pin. In the Raspberry Pi Pico's case, the onboard LED is GPIO 25, but this shortcut um, helps us by not forcing us to remember that the onboard LED is actually on GPIO 25. All right, now that we've set up the LED pin, uh, or now that we've created an LED pin, let's configure it. So we'll just use um, the configure um, function, and we're gonna basically pass it a struct that's called machine.pinconfig, uh, which with all the type hinting is super convenient because you don't actually have to type anything much. All right, so, uh, Pin config actually takes uh, something called a mode, and so we're just gonna use a mode, and we're going to call it, uh, the mode here because all we wanna do really is output on this pin. We're gonna say machine.pin output, and that's it. We are done with configuring. Um, so now we've, we've actually uh, initialized a variable that points to the GPIO 25. We've then configured that pin or that variable. So all we have to do now is literally just flash uh, the LED or blink the LED uh, twice a second. So let's, so just as with any other sort of uh, embedded systems program, we essentially set up a main or, a, or an infinite uh, loop inside of the main function. So in the case of Go, it would just be a, an empty for loop. And inside the for loop, all we're gonna do is set the pin high, uh, which output, which basically switches it on. Then we're gonna wait uh, for 500 milliseconds. So I love the fact that all this type hinting works. That's just amazing. And as you can see, um, the uh, TinyGo and the Go extension is all automatically imported the time package as well. So we've set up uh, the uh, time for the uh, LED to be on. Now let's uh, turn it off. And that's it, LED.low, and then we'll sleep again. Um, and for another 500 milliseconds, and that's it, our program is complete. And we're gonna do this over and over and over and over again until we go blue in the face and we stop talking about this at all. All right, so now that the application is written, a uh, very simple program basically, uh, let's uh, send it to the Pico and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens on the side of the Pico. All right, so save this program, and then let's jump to uh, my terminal, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm basically gonna just flash it to the uh, Pico, and the way you flash it is um, you basically put the Pico into the boot cell mode, which if you didn't set up the reset button like I did, uh, what you would do is you would essentially hold the boot cell button down while you plug the, P uh, the USB cable into the Pico. But since I've actually got um, the uh, reset button set up, uh, we, can, uh, we can directly use the reset button without needing to plug the Pico in and out. So uh, let me switch to my, um, let me switch to my uh, Raspberry Pi view and I will show you how I put the Pico into the reset mode. All right, so I'm gonna hold this reset button down, the black one, uh, while simultaneously holding the boot cell button down. 
and then I'm going to release the black button first and then the boot cell button first and uh, next and that's it and uh, lo and behold there is an rpi-rp2 uh, folder that's been created on my desktop all right so let's switch back to visual studio code and let's type our command to send the program or flash the program to the pico so the command is unsurprisingly tiny go flash uh, we're going to set a target of pico uh, it would be nice if the um, if the extension did all of this for us, but you know the extension's evolving, and so it doesn't have this facility right now. And we'll send blink dot go um, to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, at this point, it's basically going to well, it's going to basically die on me because of um, Oh, because this has this needs to be a main package. Uh, let's just change that. I'm so sorry. That was my mistake. Uh, big problem there. So we'll go back and flash this again. And um, yeah, the flash went through. And now let's switch to a Raspberry Pi. And voila, you can see the Raspberry Pi uh, blinking uh, twice a second. So very simple program basically works out of the box except for my stupidity and the things that I don't do that uh, don't that, that basically cause compiler errors I guess uh, but you can see it was a simple program it's fairly simple amount of go code that it takes to actually uh, write this and, and perform a simple task um, so that's it for this video what I'm going to do next is um, uh, so then in my next video I'm going to talk a little bit more about doing stuff in parallel or doing stuff concurrently on the Pico because that is one of the facilities that Go gives you. It gives you this, it has this concept of what they call Go routines that can run concurrently. And so um, I want to show you how you can do sort of two things at once almost um, on the Raspberry Pi Pico using TinyGo, which is kind of cool. And so we'll do that in the next uh, uh, video that I will um, share with you. But for now, I'd appreciate you subscribing to my channel. I'd appreciate you visiting my website and viewing the articles there and uh, leaving me comments either on YouTube or on my uh, website. Thanks a lot, and I uh, really hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.